Hey guys, last session for K by Go Digital Virtual Event. I cannot believe the day. I mean, so much, so much happening. And now you're gonna hear me again because uh, I forgot to pause my view. Um, so we are scheduled until about 3.05 and we're gonna be learning Google Sites. My name is Heidi Neltner. I am um, a digital learning coach in Fort Thomas. And if you've been with me before, Welcome back. Um, if not, um, hopefully we'll have a little bit of time to play and share and connect and create and do all of those things. If you are watching, um, there's a chat. Feel free to pop questions in. And I have another computer here next to me that I'm going to kind of uh, try to moderate that. And if I see questions pop up, I will stop and answer them. <laughs> Hopefully I can, I can do both things at once. Um, so what I thought we would do today was, um, I will kind of show you some examples of, um, different sites and then we're going to actually start creating one. Um, because what better way to learn than to play with it and actually do it. So, um, Hey to the people in the chat. Thanks for thanks for letting me know you're there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and screen share with you, and you're gonna see the whole like tiled effect while I click off of that. All right, so we're gonna work on building Google Site. Hopefully, you guys can um, see my screen. Is everybody seeing my screen? Okay. Awesome. Okay. Oh, Holly's here. Hey, Holly. Um, so I did want to show you guys a couple of different sites first in the way that you might use them. Um, and I also created a site for us to use. And um, if you are on the KY Go Digital Virtual page, that will pop up on um, when you click on the basics. I forgot to put that link in here. Um, I wonder if I can do that quickly. Let me see if I can do that quickly so you guys can get that link. It, it should be pretty easy to insert text box. Afternoon fail guys. Sorry about that. There we go. Just did it too many times. All right, so that site that um, you'll be able to look at is google.com. Let me change that color. I would post it in the chat, but it won't let me post in the chat. So you're gonna go to google.com slash view slash Heidi Nelt, H-E-I-D-I Nelt slash home. And I, I've tried to put links in those and it's, not working. So you can um, type it in from here or uh, you can pull it from the session, that session page. Sorry for the, sorry for the fail on that. Um, all right. So um, I got a couple sites for us to look at. The first one is one that I created for a topic, FT Reads. And this was just a place to store, um, ideas for creating book projects. Um, so if your class is doing a special project, um, you can put how to's, you can put um, different um, links to things you might want them to look at. So here I have, um, for example, book trailers and they get information about what is a book trailer and what do example book trailers look like? And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, um, then, they can learn how to make a book trailer with how-to videos. So it's just a way to um, kind of showcase different projects. Um, we did one with the first grade and I had book reviews and the kids are too young to publish their own work. So what I did was I took pictures and photos of their work and added photos of their work to the website so that we could see examples. Um, down here we have um, an example of their handwritten work and um, and then their typed up work. So that's a way to use a Google site. 
Um, you can also use a Google site as professional development and for portfolio sharing. This is a special project that I did this year with, um, with teachers and we used each teacher got a digital portfolio page. So if I go to their portfolio page, we have a little, um, I've added GIFs and then um, you can see their projects. I click here. Um, each person published a web page for their project with um, embedded images and videos and reflection. So that could be something that you do with your students. Um, but those are just a couple uses of Google um, sites. So let's jump into building a Google site because that's what you're here for. So to build a Google site, you guys might just want to pop open um, another browser or maybe um, another tab. And let's get started. Does anybody have any questions first before I jump into just showing you how to build a site? And I'll, like I said, I'll be watching the, um, I'll be watching the chat. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go in your, oh, you lost the video and audio feed. Uh, have you tried refreshing? Let's see, that's Lori. So the um, let's let's make sure it wasn't on my end. I think I'm still here, right? Okay. Um, so to make a site. What you're going to do is in your drive, just in any folder or area, you're going to, hi Tracy, press new, more, and then you're going to select Google Sites. So hopefully you guys are all seeing this okay. Is everybody seeing this okay? Just if you can confirm in the chat area, that would be awesome. Oh, good. Okay. so. Um, here is when you first start one of the new Google sites, this is what it looks like. It's all drag and drop. It's all super easy to navigate. And um, there's tons of built-in templates. It makes it really easy. Um, so what you would do first is you would name it. And this is just like naming the document. So up here in the left where you see the untitled site, that's where you would give it a name that you're um, that you would remember, and this is how it will appear in your drive. But it's not what will appear when you publish it. So I'm just gonna call this. I'm gonna call it KYGO Digital Test, so that I know that that's what it is, right? Um, and then the page title is just whatever you want the page to be called. Um, the site name. This is what it will automatically pop in from the um, from the file name. If you wanted that to be um, something different, you could add to it or you could delete it. So this would be maybe my home. If you have more than one, it will appear like that in the navigation. And you might then put a title on. So those are just the three things that you might do to name it. Now we're going to get into customization. And if I'm going too fast. I, I hope you guys are keeping up okay. But this is all very easy, all drag and drop. Um, so the next thing you might want to do is change your theme. Um, it defaults to like the simple theme and you can change colors by just clicking here um, where these colors are. And then there's also some other areas down here that are different styles that you can use. They're diplomat. You can see it's changing the font you can custom your customize your font just like very minimally. You can get a classic light or heavy view for each of these. So if I do font style, it's really not doing much to change the font. Um, so I'm going to use this vision one. And the vision one pops in a nice little background, but you can custom customize the um, color or you can type in a a color there or grab a color by dragging that around. So that's those are the different ways that you can customize it. I'm going to use purple. Um, something else that you can customize is um, you can change the image. If there's an image, 
So if I go here, I can upload one. So you could custom design one in a tool like Canva. Um, it is pretty picky about the resolution. So you have to kind of watch that. Um, or you can select one from their image bank. Um, so I just often will go to their image bank and pull something in. You might use just a regular color like this or something. Let's see, I'm just gonna grab, we'll just stick with the purple theme. And when you have one selected, you just press select. Okay, and um, that's how you can customize the the look of the page and this will kind of customize everything to look like that um and i think i'm just gonna make this black there we go all right so that's just the basics of theme now let's get into inserting comp content up here on the right you can go back over to insert and there's a whole insert um area here I also just double click and add text this way. So you're just going to add by double clicking what you want. Um, when you've add, added text, you can customize that by hovering over here on the left. And if I touch this palette, I can change, change the way that looks. I can add an image in the back, I can make it regular. Um, or I can make this a heading. So here I'm touching inside the text box. So I'm touching where it's blue. And then I press that pencil and I can make it into a heading. I can make it into a title. I can add a link to my text. Um, or if I didn't like it and need to start over, I just delete. So it's pretty easy. Another thing I can add from this quick menu if I just touch here is um, I can add an image and the image image is the way a, like a good way to um, sort of customize the way it looks because the site is pretty plain and basic but if you create a bunch of images like you can create little collages and things like that and you can turn these into links to other things and it just creates more of a visual map um, for what you're, whatever you're trying to create. Now here I have my image and I can double press and I can add text right next to it and explain what my image is. So, you know, these are apps you can use for digital storytelling. All right, and if I wanted to, I could um, double press um, and I could insert something for my drive. So here I'm going to go to my drive. Just going to find recent. See what recently I've had open. And maybe I'm going to add in a slides presentation. And with that slides presentation, I can have it auto start. I can have it loop playback. Um, if you are going to insert content from your drive, you do need to make sure that that's published to the web so that um, everybody can see it. So that's just like very quickly how you would add some of the content in. Um, some of the other things over here I have are um, that you can add in are um, YouTube videos. So if I go YouTube, I can search. I might do. My search box doesn't seem to want to work. Let me try. Um, yep, my search box isn't working. But you might um, search directly from there. Or you, if you had a link from YouTube, you could just add in that YouTube link. Let's go to YouTube real quick so you can see how that. And my cat's on. So if I was going to do... Maybe I wanted to add in a um, CodeSpaces EDU tutorial. That's what I talked about in the last one. Here's one from CodeSpaces. I'm just going to grab that link, come back over to my web page, paste that in, select it, and then I have a video embedded right in here. And you can. Um, add some ability to allow that to go full screen, or if you don't want it to go full screen, you would turn that off 
And you can double tap next to that and add in text if you want to explain what the video is. And it's just that easy. You can add maps, docs, slides, calendars, um, forms, all kinds of things. Um, one of the things you can also do is you can sometimes embed other web pages. So if you grab your embed code here, and I'm just going to do it from the side because I haven't shown you how to do that. I can embed by URL. So maybe let's just go to, um, I get a seesaw because that was one I had recently open. So maybe I want to embed seesaw. And if I have embed code, I can use that embed code. And if I don't, sometimes it'll embed it as a whole web page. So I just put that in. And I can embed it either as a whole page dyna dynamic view or as a preview. So it gives it kind of a visual feel, which is nice. If I do it as a whole page, I just press insert. And that web page then is like embedded inside of mine. And you can use a scroll feature to get through. So if I want to view this and see what it's going to look like, I just press my preview. And this, would, this is what it would look like on a computer. There's my video. There's the embedded web page. Now I've done this for things like Google searches. Um, like if I want the kids to use Kittle, for example, or Google, I might embed a, like the Google homepage and then they can just like search right from there. That is kind of confusing for some kids. So you have to kind of play around with what works. Um, you know, and if you feel like that embedded, that whole embedded page doesn't work, you can just, let's see, I'm gonna close out of my preview. You can change that view, um, but you might you may have to delete it, but then you would change to embed, paste that URL, and then use that preview instead of the, um, instead of that whole view, that whole page embed. Now, not all web pages do that. Actually, if you're trying to embed Google Sites, they just give you a word. It doesn't even give you like a preview or anything. So, um, but that, that can make your web page look a little more dynamic is by adding in either those previews or those embedded pages. Um, so that's basic insert and inserting. Um, I'm going pretty fast. But if I am ready to publish, well, let's do share with others first. I can invite other people to um, to edit. So if I want to share that as a draft, I would just type those people in. Um, I also drop these sometimes in a team drive. If you're using Google you know, G Suite, putting that in a team drive would give everybody with access to the team drive access to the web page to edit it. Um, sometimes that can be problematic if, I mean, things get deleted, they're deleted. Um, so that's something to kind of think about. Now, navigation wise, all I did was show you how to add a page. So when we're ready to add another page, you click over here on the right and you click pages. And um, you're just going to go to plus new page. You're going to name that page. So this one might be, um, Let's see, we did, vid this might be video. Okay, so put that page underneath. And now I have two, I have a home page and I have a video page. Now maybe I want a reading page. Or maybe I want pages under pages. So if I want pages under pages, I can do that two ways. I could go new page, I maybe. And you can see it's like just duplicating the theme I already have. So if I want this iMovie page underneath video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it here and just drop it under video and it nests that. And then you can see that it created like a little carrot across my top. The other way I can do that or add a sub page is if, I'm, if I've got iMovie selected here, I might press new page and then clips. And then that's going to just keep nesting those pages underneath each other. Not sure if that is making any sense. Um, but navigation wise, 
now you can see I have my navigation structure set up. Right now it's set up across the top. So if I click home, it's gonna take me in a second here to my home page. Or if I press this drop down, I can skip right to the iMovie page. And that's how it'll navigate when it's published for real life. Now, if I don't like how that's done, if I click on this navigation settings wheel, I might choose side navigation. And when you pick side navigation, it's gonna put it in like a pancake stack on the side. So when I preview this, if I'm on a computer, it's gonna expand that out already and I would have to close it. Um, and this is how it would look from a tablet view. You know, then I have to actually press the pancake stack and that would be um, like a smartphone view. So you can see how your, how your how your site looks dynamically from different devices and problems that might arise based on content if it's not you know if it's not sh content that's good for a smartphone but it's good for a website you would see how that might look so i just closed to get out of that preview and um that's how i make my little site now i made this site here for you guys um and this is what the back end of it looks like. So on the first page, on my home page, I've got the title of my site. And then I have my um, my heading kind of thing. And then I have an image. And when you click on the image, you'll see that it's going to take you to the Google Sites. And that's how you can add um, you can add links to other pages inside of there. Let me get back here real quick to home, and I'll show you how that works. But if I'm on the home page, well, come on. So if I if I choose this image, for example, I can link to sites in my pages. So I might link that to iMovie, apply. And then when somebody is on my site, when they click that, they can go to the page that it's directing them to. And that's how I set up this one here. So here, here's the Google Sites section. These were the skills that I was hoping to cover with you all. It's not going, there we go. And um, I've added animated GIFs. Well, these are some uh, for you to sort of explore and see how they look on um, video. And then here's a little area to play. And this is where we have some animated GIFs um, of the different skills that I've been showing you. So that is at, let me show you the published site. It's just at google.com slash view slash Heidi Nelt, H-E-I-D-I-N-E-L-T slash Google um, dash sites slash play or just Google sites. Um, Okay, and I have different um, GIFs and I have different um, images that kind of show you the different things that, that you could do with the site. So I know that's, I mean, it's super easy and it's, um, that's it. When you're ready to publish, you just press publish. And the first time you publish, it will ask you for some just general information. Um, but after that, like anytime you've made a change, you have to continue to publish. So if I'm over here under this new site that I've done, I'm just going to go to publish. I'm going to give it a web address. So this is going to be like, maybe it's going to be test. And it'll tell you if it's already taken. So you kind of have to type things in. So like I, you know, if you're doing this for class, you might name it the class name with your name in it. And that's going to make it very obvious. Um, and then you just, you can choose to request public search engines not display. That would be a good thing. Like if you have students making sites, have them do that so that it's good digital citizenship. They're not showing up and you can keep it a little more private. But once you have a site name that's ready to go, then you just press publish. Okay, it looks like I have a question from Lauren. How would you summarize the greatest benefits of sites to a district in which it is currently blocked? Oh, that's good. Um, I mean, it's such a great forum for students to publish their work, but also for teachers. So I don't know how many people out there are using SchoolPoint. My district uses SchoolPoint, which is great. It looks really nice. It's professional. It's ADA compliant. It's all of those things. 
Um, but there are special projects that we're doing that I just need to create a quick site for students to use. And, um, and I just want a quick teacher site. And um, that this allows me to create a site for a specific kind of project. Um, it also allows my students to create um, sites for their own learning outcomes. Now, I mean, the downfall of this is that, you know, I think even through the Google admin thing, you can't tell who's posting what or like how many sites have been created. So that's where like you really have to be on the digital citizenship. You really have to be explaining to students um, the importance of, you know, creating a positive online identity and publishing things that are, you know, true, helpful, inspiring, needed, and kind. They need to think um, before they do that. So I believe your Google admin can turn this on just for teachers and maybe block it from students if your district is not there yet. Um, but it could be a great tool for, for students to connect. Um, and Lori Ann is asking, what's the link again for the play site? So the site where I um, created, that I created for you guys is, um, which I total fail on that, I'm so sorry. It's linked on the, um, on the KY Go digital virtual page. But um, the site itself is um, sites.google.com slash view slash Heidi Nelt slash home. And that just, I can try to type it in again, but I wasn't getting um, things to go in if it was a URL before. I'm trying that right now. Oh, it went. You might be able to copy and paste that. You just have to add maybe HTTPS to it. Um, uh, so that just popped into the chat. That might work. Um, yeah, I was like, I don't know why I forgot to do that. Um, what other, like, how else could you guys see this being used? I know some people use it as a digital portfolio, which is pretty cool. Um, and there's different ways you could do that. Like, I started working with a group of kids in writing. And what they did was they made their homepage their About Me section. And then their digital portfolio, they had, like, different pieces with... Um, they would have the draft process and then the final draft as different pages with a reflection. Um, so that that might be a good use. You can also drop in a Google folder. So you could go to like your drive and embed a folder. So if they had like a portfolio in their folder, you could just have all your students' folders listed under like maybe your class page um, for like a publishing method. I've seen teachers do that. Um, I don't know, what other ideas do you guys have? I'm sort of watching the chat box. This is a, you know, targeted topic. Um, Lori's saying to use it as paper newsletter to keep parents informed. Absolutely. Um, having a site like this for your class or for your school or for your library, if you're a librarian, is a great way to keep create like a digital portfolio of the work that you guys do and to direct people to it. Um, so, I mean, that's for sure a great communication piece for parents, having how-to videos. Like, if you're a math teacher, if you could put all your, like, good how-to video links for how to do math into those, like, I'm sure there would be a lot of grateful parents um, learning new math <laughs> and trying to help their kids. Um, so, you know, that could be a, a great way to do it. Um, i trying to think of some of the other fun sites that... I've seen. Um, get back here to the website that I made for you guys. Yep. So we have uh, we have a couple. Oh, um, the EdHub site for um, Eminence. Here's this one. This is a Google site. And this is just like a direct link that their kids use where they get to all of their things like their OPAC and their um, like KYVL, Britannica Image Quest, and then the key um, resources that they use. And you can see like they've used all screenshots in that, which is great um, to use that to create like a visual. Um, they also have their calendar linked. And um, you can find materials. So like, you know, having your daily calendar listed or so parents know where kids are, kids know where they have to go. Um, they have their labs here. 
another one. Um, this is Donnie Piercy's site. <laughs> I didn't ask permission to link this here. I should have. Um, but he's got like different trainings for so for professional development, it's good. Um, you know, he's got his elementary links, his um, like how to's are all there. So that that would be good for professional development. Um, Amanda's saying that she created a site for her um, counseling program. That's a great way. I mean, how great would that be to be able to like embed your calendar just to show your availability too? You know, you don't have to show the details of your appointments, but to show your about availability and then students would know when they can come and knock on your door and not have to feel weird about not having their, the door answered, you know? So that could be a neat way. Um, to kind of open up the doors to students without you know being with being very transparent um oh yeah breakout games lauren says breakout games and i think i have a link on here i do tom's digital breakouts so if you go to um tom's digital breakouts <clears throat> um this link here gives you um an indication of what it is and it's got a little how-to video um and then he's got templates that he shares, which is pretty amazing. Uh, so you could, let's see, here's his little templates. You would just copy it. And um, he's got directions for how to do that on that home thing. And then um, information about digital citizenship and different, um, different specific topics for breakout templates. So that's linked there and that's a cool thing to do. Um, Oh yeah, professional, I mean, I was talking about professional development and that's really how, that's really what I was working on with. Our, we had a special cohort. Here's our Polaris group. Um, we had a special cohort that worked together all year and this was like the mission of the group. And then we had, here was our timeline of the work that they did, um, agendas. And so it was kind of a place for them to visit, but it also became an outbound facing Thing where we could talk about or we'll be able to go back to it and talk about the work that we did and what we learned um, with that digital digital portfolio section. So for sure, having a place to like drop your PD videos and drop your PD session information. Um, it's nice to be able to, to have that for Google, Google on a Google site. Um, and if you're in a district where it's open for the kids, um, I mean, what a powerful way for them to get real world experience on what it means to be a good digital citizen in the 21st century. And we should be making web pages for and what we shouldn't. So you can have those real life conversations with kids um, about that. So, um, couple like hacks, like I already mentioned. I mean, you can see that it is pretty. Plain. Um, so one of the things that I do is um, I use Canva. I've mentioned this a couple of times. So if you've been in my other sessions, you've probably heard me talk about it. Or if you've um, maybe you've been in other sessions where they're talking about it. So in Canva, you can create some graphics. Um, if I go to more here, I can. I don't think they have a Google header yet, but I think. I've been able to create um, images and things like that using the Google Plus header. That one might work. It may be a, a bit big. I can't remember um, which one. If you're using a bigger header, you might be able to. But you could create custom headers in Canva with the size that they have. Um, the other thing that I like to create here, if I get back up to my my work um I, I like to create little buttons um so like i made little business cards for all the people who were in my um pd group and then i used these images as the links to their pages so um what you would do is you would just download these as pings or um, jpegs and then you come back to your your site and you insert that, let me show you on this page here. You insert that and then it becomes the little placeholder, the little link for um, for their work. So here's their portfolio, here's their main portfolio page. And as I scroll down, if I click on the business card, 
it takes me to that. So it's a way to make your your site more visual, especially if you have little, if you're working with little kids and they need a visual element to it. Um, and I already kind of showed you guys how to do that just by inserting those images and um, grabbing and then just grabbing the link. So you just click on the image and then you can add, not that one, this is the image. You click on that image and then you can add that hyperlink right into that. Um, let's see, what else do I make on Canva that I like to put in? I can't, I'm not really kind of blinking out on other stuff. If you do the dot, dot, dot here, you can get some site analytics. There's not a ton there. Um, you can duplicate your site. Oh, Flavicon, um, you can add a logo. And that's just like when you have a little, um, like a little square. So I might upload or select. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. So I'm going to do it from my Google Drive. Let's do badges. I know there's like a square in here. It's good to use just a square. And then it adds a logo to your site. So that might be something else that you want to do. You might change it for the theme or it'll pick up that color, but you can see it just popped it up there um, as a logo. I don't know. Um, do you guys have any questions? Is there anything? It's so easy. I don't know if there's anything I didn't cover um, or I kind of jumped around a little bit, but I feel like I'm finishing a little too fast on y'all. I am going to stop sharing my screen. Just a second. Okay, so I'm back. Um, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I really like Google Sites for extra projects for creating for sharing, um, and that's something good to do. So if you are um, if you are inspired to create a site. Um, I would love it if you would tag me with that site and maybe let me collect some more examples to show teachers that I'm working with. But, um, you know, create and share. Use that KYGO digital hashtag and um, tag me at Heidi Nelt. I'd love to see the stuff that you guys are working on this summer and the learning that you're doing. So sites is super easy, great way to put your put your word out there and share what your students are doing. Um, that's all I really have. Um, Lori. I totally agree with the school point sites. <laughs> I've put a lot of effort into school point sites in the past and they just don't always do what I feel like I want them to do. Um, one of the things though with um, Google sites to be aware of is as you're creating a site that is supposed to be used for like maybe official communication, I think it's supposed to be ADA compliant now. And I don't know that the Google Sites has that like tag that lets you know like this is ADA compliant. Um, so that's where like maybe posting a site on a school point and just saying like, you know, this is just for our students to use or something. Um, you might want to check in on that, but that is one of the complaints that I've seen. And that's why, you know, we stick with school point because it's, we can do that ADA compliant kind of thing. Um, and somebody probably knows more about that than I do, <laughs> is more knowledgeable about that. Um, but for sure, like, find those enhancements. You can add GIFs now to your site, and it'll publish in the beginning. You couldn't. Um, I create a lot of, like, how-to GIFs using um, Camtasia Studio. Um, use Canva um, and add, add those custom images that you've made, that custom kind of brand. Um, teach your students how to do that. I think your older students might really get a kick out of that, especially, you know, if you want to tap into that entrepreneurship style learning that Casey Bell was talking about. You just can create a whole Google site for a product that they that they sell and they could have a brand and it could be um, a really amazing real world authentic way for them to um, to share their learning and their passions. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys logging in and hanging out with me here to the end of the day. And um, hopefully I'll get to catch you all on Twitter with the hashtag. Um, unless there are any other questions, I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great summer and um, break down those silos. <laughs>